Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm Yasha, if you're new here, and today's video is going to be about pursuing radiology as an IMG. Now, I know I've done a video like this in the past, and that really focused on getting into radiology through the match, but there's also the ABR alternate pathway. The ABR is the American Board of Radiology, and this is for um, international medical graduates who have already pursued a diagnostic, or a, yeah, I guess a diagnostic radiology residency outside of the US, and there is a way for you to pursue radiology via the alternate pathway instead of going through the match. So there's kind of two ways to get into radiology if you are an international medical graduate. So I'll be discussing both of those. The first half of the video will be focused on matching into radiology. So if you're going to go the conventional pathway, which is matching, you know, um, via the NRMP, and then the second half will be the alternate pathway. So if this is something that's helpful to you, please keep watching. As I said, I have done a video like this in the past, and so I have link I'll link it up here in case you want to go see that. Some of this information will be duplicated, but I have tried to kind of update some of the information and Im include important uh, literature citations because there have been some publications that have come out that talk about matching into radiology as an IMG and the alternate pathway, and so I'll be talking about what I think are the important points in those papers. The first thing I want to do is just to have a couple of definitions because we'll be saying the words US IMG and non-US IMG a bunch of times during this video. So a US IMG is someone who is a US citizen that has graduated from an international medical school such as the Caribbean or somewhere else overseas. And then a non-US IMG is an IMG who is not a US citizen. So those are the basic definitions. And like I said, I'll be using those terms a lot during the first half of this video. So now that we've um, defined those terms, I think it's important to look at the match rates. So I'll be looking down a lot because I have notes on my laptop. So in 2018, the match rate for a US IMG was 52%, and for a non-US IMG, the match rate was 44%, and that was in 2018. So about half of the applicants who applied into radiology as an IMG matched. It's also important to look at the mean number of contiguous ranks, and what this means is that this is how many programs are ranked by each applicant, or I guess but on average by the applicants that were IMGs. And so for um, US IMGs, the mean number of contiguous ranks, so the mean number of radiology programs that were ranked was 7.9, so about eight. And for um, non-US IMGs, the mean number of programs that were ranked were about six. So I guess that kind of tells you about how many interviews you're going to have or you should have. And like those are all radiology. So if you are dual applying, which the data shows that most applicants did apply to more than one specialty for both US and non-US IMGs, that means that at least seven of those or six of those, if you are a non-US IMGs, were all radiology. So that can also help tell how competitive you are depending on how many interviews you get. That being said, now that we are in the virtual interview setting, I know that people are over applying and so that number may have increased and I don't have data for that. But I would keep take that with a grain of salt that you may need more interviews to match kind of as we get further and further into these virtual interviews. Step scores are also really important when it comes to matching into radiology. Um, the average step score for applicants who matched into radiology as an IMG for US IMGs was 239. And for non-US IMGs, this was 241. So that can really give you a good um, kind of idea of how competitive you are if those are your scores. And I will say that it's so important for international medical graduates to do well on these tests. I know that sometimes it can be difficult because you're not, you know, you didn't have your training in the US, but it's just part of the application. And it's only going to become more challenging when step one becomes pass fail, because step one is gonna be taken out of the equation and you really have to perform on step two. So. It's unfortunate, but that's just kind of part of the application process. So try to do well on these exams if you can. A big part of applications that I see when I'm reviewing applications from IMGs are the research um, portion of the application. That's because a lot of IMGs are currently in research positions. You know, that's usually their entryway into getting into radiology. And so, and I think that really shows in the statistics when you look at them. For US IMGs, who usually don't go the research route, the mean number of abstracts, presentations, and posters was only 2.6, but for non-US IMGs, this number is actually 15.9. So it's much higher, and unfortunately, after you hit a certain point, I don't think that more research, more is more in that sense. I think that at that point, you really have to buff up the other parts of your application for it to really make an impact. But those are the numbers, again, and that can help you judge your competitiveness against your, your um, peers. 
It's really important to make sure that you don't forget about the other parts of your application as well, volunteer experiences, work experiences, etc. I know that many of the IMDs that apply do have a lot of work, work experiences, but it is important to also have volunteer experiences and especially if you have a long gap between when you graduated from medical school and now you're trying to reapply, make sure that you have something clinical during those years off. I think that will really, really help strengthen your application and show that you're able to easily transition into the US American, into the US healthcare system. There's also a great paper that was published in November 2020 in academic radiology called a 15 year analysis of international medical graduates matching into diagnostic radiology residency programs in the US. If you have access to this paper, I think it's really, really beneficial for you to kind of evaluate your application and kind of see where you match up to your peers. But I'm going to go over some of the things he talked about right now. I think one of the most promising trends that they showed in this paper was that the match rate for um, international medical graduates is actually going up. One of the sentences from the paper talks about how the fill rate for IMDs has increased from 7.3 in 2006 to 14.5% in 2020. And they show a nice graph showing the upward trajectory. So I think this is really promising if you are an IMD trying to get into radiology. Now is probably a really good time to try. That being said, again, with the virtual interviews, it's hard to know how that's really panning out when it comes to international medical graduates. But I'm hoping that this trend continues. One important statistic that they discussed in this paper was the mean number of years since graduation from medical school. And I think that's a question that I do get asked a lot is like, I have this many years out of medical school. What are my chances of graduating? Obviously, I can't answer a question like that because I don't really know. But um, I do know that the more number of years you have since medical school graduation, it kind of decreases your chances over time of matching. And one statistic they, um, they stated was that the mean number of years since medical school graduation was 1.4 years for U.S. IMGs and 6.2 years for non-U.S. IMGs. So you can kind of use that information and see like, where do you kind of line up with that? Does that kind of sound like you? And are you way off from those numbers, like way higher, way lower? And kind of judge your competitiveness on that one fact based on this. One last thing I wanted to point out was that the... Um, Proportion of international medical graduates that match into interventional radiology has also been going up. It was actually 0% in 2016, which was the first year of the Integrated Interventional Radiology Residency match, and it went up to about 7% in 2020. So that's really something I think that's important to look at and also to optimize your chances. You never know where you're going to match and you're never, you're, you're never going to match unless you try. So that's also something to consider is do you also want to dual apply? IR is known to be a little bit more competitive than diagnostic radiology, but hey, you never know like where you may end up. So just another thing to consider. I think one majorly overlooked fact is the interview day. So if you do end up getting an interview, something that the interviewers are always looking at, and this is based on the PD survey as well, the NRMP program director survey for radiology, that they really look at interpersonal skills between you and the faculty, you and the house staff, your communication skills, and also language fluency. So if you have the opportunity and this is something that may be a barrier for you, try to find as many ways as possible to practice. Just practice as much as you can to make sure that you kind of overcome that um, challenge that may be specific to you because that's something that may hold you back. And I just like, I don't want to see that happen. So just practice as much as you can. And you can practice with like anybody. I mean, if you have faculty mentors, you can practice with them. If you have any peers that are willing to help you and honestly, just practicing the common interview questions, those are the best things that you can do to help you on your interview day. Other things that may be overlooked is trying to get letters of recommendation from faculty that are in the United States. If you are in a research position, trying to get letters of recommendation from people that are outside the research world, it's okay to have one research letter, but you don't wanna have four research letters. So try to get as many of the letters as you can that are recent, that are not only from research mentors and that are based in the US. I think that can also really help your application. Of course, having mentors reach out to programs, again, that can help optimize your application, bring it to the top of the pile. And network whenever you can. If you can go to conferences, network there. Networking on social media, I mean, you all know how I feel about that, but I think networking is something that you can really do to help your application. Have lots of people read your application from start to finish as well. You never know where there might be something where there's a, you know, this is advice I give to everyone, but for typos, for content, making sure you have a well-rounded application. These are all things that will help get your application through these initial checks where otherwise it may just get sifted to the bottom of the pile. 
Okay, so that was the matching into radiology via the NRMP pathway, but now I really want to talk about the ABR alternate pathway. And the ABR alternate pathway is basically a means for internal, international medical graduates who have already done diagnostic radiology residency in another country to practice radiology in the US. So the main place that I got information for this part of the video, because obviously I, this is not something that I have done myself, is the ABR website, but I honestly found the ABR website and the ABR um, URL for the alternate pathway to be a little bit confusing. However, I did find this amazing paper that really lays things out for you. It's called the American Board of Radiology's Alternate pa Pathway for Diagnostic Radiology, What the Programs and Applicants Need to Know. And I would highly encourage you to read this paper. It's very short, it's only a few pages. And so I kind of went through it again and I'll highlight the most important things that I learned from this paper. But if this is you and you're in this position, you should really read this from front to back and take some notes even and see if you can, if this is the right pathway for you. So as far as eligibility goes to participate in the ABR alternate pathway, the um, applicant must have completed diagnostic radiology residency outside the US or Canada and be qualified to practice independently in that country. So essentially you must be a radiologist in that country for you to participate in this pathway in the US. You must also have ECFMG certification. The authors also recommended having step three completed so that you can get your medical training license. And basically what the pathway is, is you must complete four continuous years of radiology training as a resident, fellow, or faculty, or some combination of these three things at a single institution. That's important. This, is, this can only happen at a single institution. So if you start at University of Washington, you must do all four years at that institution. And I don't think that there are really exemptions for this. You would obviously have to talk to the ABR about that, but um, it must be at a single institution. So four years at a single institution, and most commonly, as I talk about in the paper, and also what I've seen in my own you know, um, experience, is that most of these um, grad, international medical graduates and radiologists really do this as four years of fellowship. Most commonly, I think people do four different fellowships. So you can do one year of musculoskeletal radiology, one year of breast imaging, one year of body radiology, you know, whatever it is, whatever combination that interests you, IR, pediatrics, whatever it is, you have to do four years of those. So if you've already finished training in another country and you want to come here and practice, this might be a really good way for you to become a radiologist here in the U.S. They also talked about how research can be credited up to 12 months. I'm not sure what the specifics are on that, so you would have to find out. But if you are already pursuing research at an institution, you may be able to use 12 months of that research time to go towards this ABR alternate pathway. And all it says as far as which programs offer this is any radiology department that offers fellowship training or combined training or a faculty position for a total of four years can participate in the alternate pathway. Obviously, this is going to take some legwork on your end to figure out exactly which institutions are participating. Upon a quick Google search, I did find that University of Washington participates and they actually have like a website and a way for you to apply. And so that can be a good starting point. But I know if you think about it, like the big major academic institutions in the US, usually if you look at like US news or doximity rankings, those top 10, 15 programs usually have the alternate pathway available. Don't quote me on that, but um, that's a good way to start. If they have, if they offer numerous fellowships, you may be able to do the ABR alternate pathway at that institution. And then as far as taking your exams, so the core exam and then the certifying exam to become a licensed physician, certifying to become a certified, I don't know what the right word is, to become board certified, that's right. Um, you can take the core exam after your first three years in the alternate pathway, and then you can take the certifying exam after your four years are complete. So pretty similar, I would say, to the you know, res the way that we would do it as residents, except for the fact that we can't take our certifying exam until 18 months after we graduate from residency. I'll have all the citations for the papers that I cited and the NRMP statistics that I cited down below. I really think it's important for you to read these on your own and go through it in more detail. I went through them and just picked out the things that I thought were most important, but they, that may not be most important to you. So um, let me know if you have any more questions about matching into radiology as an IMG or pursuing the alternate pathway. I will say the ABR is very, very responsive, at least whenever I have emailed them. So if you do have a specific question, I encourage you to direct it to them because I honestly may not know the answer, but I'll try to do what I can in the comments of this video. Um, 
Many of the authors that wrote these papers are also on Twitter. And so I encourage you to follow them on Twitter. And George, one of the um, IMDs who collaborated with me on the last video, he is awesome. And he is one of the authors of that first paper that I talked about. So feel free to reach out to him as well. And if this was helpful to you, please give it a like. Please subscribe to my channel. It really helps me. And I will see you all in the next one. Bye.